when we expose ourselves to a non-native EMF, so something like Wi-Fi, 4, 5G, blue light, those frequencies actually oscillate at different speeds to what our cells oscillate at and what the Earth oscillates at. So what happens is that either slows down or speeds up cells. Now, in the most cases, these oscillations like 5G, 4G, Wi-Fi, really terrible things because the oscillation that they spin at is a lot more than what our internal um, cells spin at. So what happens is you increase aging because the cells are basically spinning faster than what they should do. So people are aging quicker. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Welcome to Almost 30. Welcome to Almost 30 Podcast, <laughs> recording from our new studio. New studio. It's a little bare right now, but we're going to fill it with some... Bean bag chairs yep. and lava My... lamps. <laughs> My brother just said the other day, he's like, I really need a bean bag chair. I was why? Like, why? Why do you guys like beanbag chairs? Because it reminds them of when they were like eating ho hos and playing video games in yeah. their college dorm room. Yeah, they're uncomfortable. I think some of them are comfortable, but I also think they probably could um, catch fire at any time. Like, I feel like they're like flammable. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually really smart, though. You know, it's just like a bunch of shit in a bag. But there's not beans. It's like not beans. Yeah. Anyway. But if it was vegan, that would be so funny. <laughs> they're like, it's vegan. Yeah, they're like, it's actually corn. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the pod. I'm Lindsay Simsick, and this is my co-host, Krista Williams. And we're just so glad you're here. However you found us, maybe a friend told you about Almost 30, or you were just scrolling through Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, we have honest, real, inspiring, hopefully funny conversations about lots of things that uh, we are all going through as we transition through any point in our lives. It started when we were almost 30, but hey, we're in our 30s, okay? Yep. Leave us alone. <laughs> Let me be. <laughs> but yeah, the pod has become a global community and we are touring the world, trying to meet each and every one of you. That's the goal. Oh, we love it. It's been a and while. And tour is... Now over. Now over this year. It's over for 2019. <laughs> I and I am sad because I'll miss you guys, but I'm also glad. It's it's like I need to... I almost feel like I need to hydrate physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I mean, <laughs> honestly. I, we, we keep saying we feel so crusty. Feeling crusty. crusty. I just feel depleted. I mm -hmm. just feel like... Yeah. When you're tired, when you're like a kid and you're so tired, you're angry. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm so tired. I'm angry. Mm -hmm. I just want to be, just need to need a moment. Totally. To just be. And I'm just really disappointed in myself that I didn't plan for December to be a month of grounding, of mm -hmm. making sure that the foundation for 2020 is starting off on a good foot. It's already starting off in chaos with everything we have going on. And didn't really give myself time to get organized or to take a breath. I have some time, but not really. And it's just not... This is not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good at all. I know. We always have the intention of like trying to chill as much as possible when we can. And it's it's very hard. Yeah. There's a lot of like things tugging at almost 30. And of course, Krista and I have to, you know, be available for it. So... Yeah. And I'm going to work a lot, which will be... I'm I'm looking forward to working a lot because then I can just get everything done and feel good. But then it's just... I just want to be... I don't know. Just... I didn't plan well. Mm -hmm. You know? But I'm not going home. So that's that's the good thing. Yeah. That is good. Being a free bird. Free bird. Well, tis the season to be buying 
Mm-hmm. Tons of gift I've actually been getting a bunch, not a bunch. I've gotten two things for my family. We'll just like That's send cool. it to us whenever. Yeah. yeah. They just send it to me because actually I just wanted to get new staples. And, you know, I don't know what you guys are asking for for Christmas, but some of the girls in the Facebook group, we are all talking about just being a little bit more thoughtful mm-hmm. and conscious about our gifts and doing less, but getting nice things that we really love. And I asked for um, really nice makeup bags and jewelry holders and just nice containers for when we travel, you yeah. know, having my face washes, my vitamins, like everything that we carry would be in these random bags, which is fine. But I just kind of wanted them to be a little bit, little bit more cohesive. So I just got a bunch of Kuyana stuff, mm-hmm. C-U-Y-A-N-A. Um, and they'd have like the model of simpler, better. They never have sales. So I wish I could offer you a sale code or a sale time. But um, I've just been getting a bunch of those to like have when we travel. Yeah, they're great. There's something to organization that is such a gift. Yeah. <laughs> or like, and also like beautiful organization. I, I tend to take care of my things better when I have something like a really nice little bag to put it in or organizational thing. So yeah, I think that's a great gift. Even though like if I were to give that to someone, I'd be like, oh, is that like a good gift? Because mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like meaning the thought, but it's like, that's such a good gift. Uh, like I, I would love to receive it. The, the more functional <laughs> nowadays, the yes. more I like the gift. Yeah, that's actually Like, you know what I mean? True. Like when people like back in the day when you were younger, it would be like you, the more unfunctional, the better. Like let's give them a, like a, a collage of all Yes. This. <laughs> or like a Game Boy or like, you know, oh, just... Yeah. It was completely just for fun. And now it's like, please be as functional as possible. Yes. Now I understand why my mom gave my dad underwear for 30 years. Totally. Every year. I actually talked to him. I was like, since <laughs> mom and dad got... Since you guys got divorced, have you gotten new underwear? And he's like, I'm not sure. I'm like, we should probably go shopping for you when I when I see you. Because I'm not sure if you've have bought new underwear since you got divorced. Dudes will wear underwear until there's a hole right up from the butthole to I, the top. <laughs> Justin was wearing underwear the other day that was from Body Glove. What's Body Glove? It was like... It, it's, it's honestly this like old ass brand. It was like, what are these Body Glove underwear? I'm like, what is going on? Um, what are you asking for? You know what? I haven't asked for anything yet, but I've been thinking about just, you know, having the new the new apartment and just ways in which, again, the organization or maybe there's like um, something from a small business that would be unique for the space, yeah. whether it's art or a plant yes. or something like that. It's just kind of fun to to curate to curate a home. So I'm kind of obsessed with that. But it, that's Body Glove. Body Glove, let me see. It's like a water sports brand. Oh my God. Hold on, what? Like, did someone give you those? Oh my God. Hold on. I mean, were they so... Were they really tight? They were just kind of like a... We're talking about Justin's Body Glove underwear. They were just like a weird patterning. It was like very odd. But hey, I mean... These are like wetsuits. The, exactly. It's like a wetsuits <laughs> brand. That's why I'm like, what are you doing? But honestly, I like haven't worn underwear in 14 years because I don't have any. So. I mean, oh my God, same. Actually, that's a good thing to ask for. Underwear is But I, I might need, I might just need to send links because I think my mom would still go to um, Victoria's Secret and get the five for 27. And I don't, I don't vibe with the Victoria's Secret style anymore. No. Nope. Do you know what I mean? Victoria's Secret just, there was a wave happening of transformation and evolution that we had as a society and they just fucking missed it. They missed it. They missed it on purpose. Do and, you think? Uh, yeah, the guy, the guy that's a CEO, I think he's oh, like a yeah, dick. yeah, he's a little, little slow. Yeah, they could have had a really good opportunity to like step into their power and just support female, all female bodies, all female um, types, completely. all not even females, to support the human race in our evolution by feeling good in their underwear, and they didn't. I feel like they are one of the only you know intimate brands that aren't hopping on the train of yep. body positivity and being for everyone. Yep. In their branding, yep. especially. And it's a train that we're supporting. It's not hopping on a train. It's a movement that's... A movement, yeah. Of yeah. You know, us being more conscious of everyone. But Absolutely. Like, they just were like... They totally dropped the ball. But yeah, I used to ask for like Victoria's Secret stuff. Underwear is a really good one. I actually... Really good one. I always tell Justin's mom. I always like text her. I'm like, this is what Justin needs. He needs luggage. Like a luggage is such a good Christmas good. present. Such a good one. My parents got that for me last year. It's a good such one. Such a good one. So functional. Mm-hmm. And you don't really want to buy it. You're like, oh, luggage. I don't, I'm not super into buying that. So that's totally. always a favorite. Yeah. For my for my family giving, um, because we're going to see each other this year, basically all together, except for my sister, Cameron. But 
I'm going to give them ex- an experience. We're going to the desert. We're going to do like horseback riding. Cool. <laughs> I know. But I'm like, oh, it's not very like something they can take away. But I think it'll be fun. And my mom can't ride a horse because of her leg, but we're going to, she's going to do equine therapy. Cool. Which would be cute. She loves horses. So I'm it's so literally going to be a dream. Um, I thought I would crush equine therapy and I didn't. <laughs> I was like terrified. <laughs> like, hello. I know. No, I was oh, like you were scared? scared. I was terrified. Yeah. Why? I just... It was... I mean, the horses were big. We were, we're talking about really on-site, our experience there. We had um, on equine therapy sessions and... Uh, scary. Yeah. Horses, no joke. Mm-hmm. They're very powerful, very big. Another thing that I got that I thought would be a good present was I actually got Cosbox. Did mm-hmm. you get yours? Not yet. So we're I'm working with Cosbox it. and it's actually like a thoughtfully curated box mm-hmm. that has brands that all have a give back component or have a just like a charitable component. It yeah. has made by women focused products or female focused products and brands. And I was so impressed. Wow. Like the branding is on point. The color scheme is on point. All the products were on point. And it was like a beautiful candles, beautiful mittens, mm. a beautiful primer, these gold dainty earrings. I was like really, really pumped. I because sometimes when they are like it is a give back brand, it, you know, there have been times and there is that assumption that the branding isn't always going to be completely on trend, mm-hmm. and they just completely nail hit the nail on the head. Oh, cool! Yeah. So Cosbox is something too that I'm probably going to give um, a few of my friends. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, for my friends this year, because I want to be do something small and thoughtful, but I'm not exactly sure what to do. Yeah, I was thinking about. I mean, like not to loop in our conversation with Andy today, but with blue blocks. Yeah, and like just thinking about you know light therapy and also you know our light hygiene. I mean, this is not an ad, but like the fact that not many people know about it would be like kind of a cool gift and invitation for them to like explore it and be an easy way. Like if you, Gave them glasses. It is more of a pricey gift, but I, totally worth it. So I know. If there's someone in your life that you know could use per, in sister. front of a computer all the time, or maybe they have trouble falling asleep because they've been on computers or screens all day and close to bedtime. Their red light glasses are unreal. So yeah, I'm thinking about that. Yeah, this interview, you guys, is actually crazy. Yeah, it was like blew my mind away. So when we this interview we have today with Andy from Blue Blocks, so we are a partner of Blue Blocks, and I'm very proud and excited to be because of the thought and care that they take into their blue blockers. So not all blue blockers are created equal. Um, there are a lot of very cheap ones that are being made that actually do not do not do what they say they're supposed to do and do not cover the frequency and wave of blue light that is it is intended to do. And Blue Blocks does that. They cover the correct frequency and intensity of the specific blue light that is going to impact your health. So just FYI, they're not all made equal. So you can get really cheap ones on Amazon. And I have actually done that in the past and they were not working or they're not mm-hmm. doing what they were intended to do. So Blue Blocks is very thoughtful about, you know, making products that actually work. And Andy's so knowledgeable. Like there's so much about our life and health mm-hmm. that is related to light. It is like, it's crazy. I just I felt like this is another piece as we talk about quite often with sound, that sound is a missing link of health and of spirituality. But I do think that light is a really big component of our health that we're going to tap into more in 2020 and beyond and figure out how important it is to everything, to hormones, to um, weight, to mood, uh, to energy, to everything. It's just very, very key. So this conversation is so dense with references, with, you know, insights. And it seemed overwhelming at first for me, but I've applied a lot of the principles that Andy uh, touched on and have felt you know, even better. Yeah. He went through basically like his daily hygiene as it relates to light. And it was really, really fascinating because points in his routine kind of highlighted points in mine that I was like, oh, that's why I'm not feeling my best or unable to fall asleep quickly. So for example, he wakes up 10 minutes before sunrise. He makes sure that he's out there to watch the sunrise. This really helps like train his body clock, allowing the circadian mechanism (laughs) to start firing um, to like ensure that throughout the day he's hormonally balanced and energetically balanced. And, you know, for example, then he'll go to the gym and there's 
you know, artificial lighting at most gyms. And so he wears, he ha- they have this yellow summer glow blue light glass. So it's not the red, which you would wear at night, but it's a yellow frame. And this helps to protect against the um, artificial lights, which uh, in, it, it, I, I forget, he'll explain it in this episode, but it kind of tricks up the release of, I don't know if it's melatonin or another melanin, melanin. in your skin. I don't know, but it just, the artificial light obviously is just not good for you. And I forget what it does, but he'll explain. But it was just fascinating to kind of go part by part throughout his day and um, see how r- light can affect, you know, all of the body's functions. Yeah. When he talks about watching the sunrise, it's important because it builds up your melanin levels. So melanin is a natural pigment of the skin, which gives, gives the skin its color. So, um, you know, having melanin is important for blocking um, UV radiation. And melanin also absorbs light. And so when you have this higher melanin, which you can get from being in the sun early in the morning, it can help protect you naturally against UV radiation. So when we were in Fiji recently, it was really important and thoughtful of us. We tried as much as we could Mm -hmm. to be outside in the morning to see the sunrise, to get our higher melanin levels or to build up our melanin over the week. And then we wouldn't have the risk of being burned as much. And then also too, when your sun sets, um, that also is a different type of light uh, intensity and light spectrum because the sky is usually orange or purple or all of these things that helps your skin um, to just decompress from having the bright, bright sun through the day. So that full cycle is really important for us if we're thinking about being outside to protect naturally from the sun if we wanted to you know, avoid getting skin cancer or harmful UV radiation. Yeah. And he told us he has red lights. They're like red light bulbs in every lamp light fixture in his house. So his house is red. But he does this because most of uh, the lights emit blue and green light. If he exposes his eyes and skin to this kind of light after the dark, it'll reduce the melatonin production um, and just make him kind of sick if you're not getting enough sleep and all of that. So... It was fascinating. Major inspo. So just everything in here is so insightful and interesting. And there is actually tons of uh, references, you know, research references that we can link in the show notes to, to a lot of what he says. But I found it super inspiring. I found it very exciting that one of the um, resources that we talk about here is free for everyone. Sunlight is thankfully free for most of us. You know, hopefully it's sunny where you are. Uh, So I always love to bring in things related to health that are accessible to all. Yes. So thank you so much to Andy. And um, his wife actually came to the recording as well, Katie. And she was so sweet. We recorded in Sydney. So it was a blast to meet you. And we're really, really proud to be partnering with Blue Blocks. Um, And you can use the code ALMOST30 for discount. So enjoy this episode. Thank you so much for listening. As always, share this with friends on Instagram. It always means so much to us. DM us and join the secret Facebook group. There's over 15,000 women in there chatting every day, supporting one another. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. It is. Enjoy. Love you. It's holiday time, New Year's coming. And I know a lot of us are really starting to think about how we can take care of ourselves better. And listen, we cannot neglect our feminine care. Okay, this industry has really made us settle for quite a long time. And finally, a brand like Rael has come along and given us a natural, safe way to take care of our bodies and our period during that time of the month. They have natural tampons, pads, liners, underwear. They also have body care like washes and wipes. We need to make sure that our pH in our vagina is balanced and the wash is just incredible. I use it every single day. They have heating patches, herbal heating patches for cramp relief. Uh, They also have facial masks for every week of your cycle. Um, Hello, like this is the future, everybody. Hop on board. Truly, I feel so good when I have my period. Isn't that weird? I've never said that before. And I just feel so good and so taken care of. And I've 
I've cultivated this myself with the help of Rael. It's awesome. You'll feel really empowered. Get Rael.com. You can use our code almost 30 for 20% off. That's G-E-T-R-A-E-L.com. Use our code almost 30 for 20% off your first order. And if you have a Target store near you, listen, Rael is sold nationwide at Target stores. So I'm sure there's one nearby. Visit Target to get Rael or get Rael.com. Use the code almost 30 for 20% off. Okay. I want to get into this, but I first want to say hello. Hello. Um, we're so glad um, you're here. Hi. Both of you, <laughs> lovely founders. We have both Kate and Andy here of Blue Blocks, recommended by our dear friend, Lacey. Huge fan. She is, her standards are very high. So we trust her very much. Mm-hmm. And our friends at Conscious City Guide were lucky enough to connect us. And since we've gotten your products, it's just been amazing. And we had a nice chat on the phone and I've just been really looking forward to our conversation. You're just such a wealth of knowledge and even starting from from this place related to you know eating outside and the time of eating and how it affects a lot of people i think you know we're coming to a place with our community of women um where we're seeing that they are doing all of the things but sometimes they're not getting the results that they want so we need to find out what's really happening maybe they're working at a desk job and light may be affecting them so i think there's just a lot of different ways that our conversation could go today and i'm really grateful you're here and i'm looking forward to it yeah i'd love to know like how you became so involved and fascinated and just kind of digging into the research behind light and how it affects our bodies minds and like even spirits too. I think there's something to, you know, the the spiritual body that is affected by not only EMFs, but artificial light and how much sleep we get. So I'd love to just kind of go back and, and learn how you got into this. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, about sort of eight to 10 years ago, I was struggling with my own health issues. Um, I was constantly sort of having procedures in hospitals to have my appendix out. I had kidney stones in my early 20s, would always get injured playing a lot of sports and just sort of struggled to, you know, keep my weight under control. And I tried all the different dieting principles, you know, cutting calories, um, those types of um, efforts, you know, low fat diets, um, um, everything that I guess the, the government guidelines would prescribe to someone that wanted to get in better shape. But none of it worked for me. So I thought to myself one day, right, I'm just going to try and figure this out myself. I'm going to read all the evidence that's out there. So I signed up to PubMed, which is a free academic journal site. I researched dieting and I came up with a a diet that fitted my needs. And I lost a lot of weight very quickly, felt a lot healthier. So this sort of sent alarm bells ringing in my head of like, wow, what else is out there that's maybe wrong with my life that I can improve? And I'd never slept well. Um, And even when I tidied up my diet and started eating healthily, I still couldn't sleep well. So I looked into like what or how sleep work in humans and found that there were two ways that sleep worked. And the first one was was sleep pressure. So for instance, you burn energy during the day um, in the form of ATP. And the byproduct of that is something called adenosine, builds up in the brain. The more it builds up from the more activity you do during the day and throughout a period of a day, you feel tired and want to go to sleep. The second way was all tied to light and biophotons. So it led me down the the garden path of looking at circadian rhythms. So these are, people have probably heard of them more as a body clock. And when your body clock is functioning correctly, all your hormones are functioning properly. They're, They're suppressed when they need to be suppressed or they're secreted when they need to be secreted. And your circadian rhythm is governed by light and dark cycles. So if you think back ancestrally, our ancestors would have got up with the rising sun when the sun sets, they would have just had the campfire. And it was these light environments that basically evolved our circadian rhythm and allowed us today to, you know, in the absence of, of the artificial light, be healthy and have our hormones secreted in a, in a correct way. And then I sort of read that if we introduce specific frequencies of light into our environment at the wrong times of the day, it can actually turn off the production of melatonin, um, which is the sleep hormone, and it can increase cortisol, which can cause you know, chronic stress, anxiety, depression, which then has a knock-on effect that you can't sleep anymore as well. So what I did was I I researched that a little bit more, not to go into too much detail, um, but then I, I discovered, you know, if you blocked blue and a lot of green light after dark, you would you would get a better sleep. So I ordered a few cheap pairs of, of glasses, like the amber-tinted lenses from, from Amazon, 
put them on and I had some good improvements to my sleep after the first sort of couple of weeks of wearing them. But then after that period, it sort of regressed back to waking up in the night, struggling to go to sleep. And I happened to have friends that worked in an optics lab here in Australia. And when I did like dived into the research, I found that the specific frequencies of light you needed to block were between 500 and, uh, 400 and 550 nanometers, which is all blue light, a little bit of green light. So I took the glasses to, to the lab and I said, do you mind testing these with your lab equipment and just telling me what frequencies of light they're blocking? And it was 20 pairs of glasses and none of them blocked what the academic literature was saying you should block. So they weren't actually doing what they were advertised in, you know, saying that they would do. They weren't blocking the frequencies of light that disrupted melatonin. So I just said on the off chance, could you, you know, create a lens that would block those specific frequencies of light 100%? And they said, yeah, no problem. And in a couple of weeks, I had samples and then Blue Blocks was born. And we then created this lens that was a deeper orange, almost a red lens that you wear after dark. We sent it out to a lot of people to try that were already using Blue Blockers. And every single person that we sent them out to, I think it was about 50 to start with, contacted us and said, we've thrown away our other Blue Blockers. Like, these are game-changing. And then it led us to, to, I guess, create some ones for the daytime as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of glasses companies out there now that are jumping on the blue light bandwagon, offering these clear lenses that, you know, you can wear when you're at a computer. But we've tested those as well. And they actually, it's, it's quite funny, all these companies that are selling these cheap pairs of clear glasses, they actually don't block any of the light that's present in your laptop screens or your phones or your lights. They, they focus on violet light, not even blue light. And they're also confusing the message by saying you can wear clear glasses after dark. When you can't, you need to be wearing these red lenses to block specific frequencies. So yeah, we wanted, I guess our, our mantra when we founded Blue Blocks was really to create optimal evidence-based products and actually provide an education around them. Um, because there's a lot of noise about blue light at the moment and a lot of people talking about it. But 90% of the information that's out there from what we've seen is totally incorrect and really misleading. So we wanted to first and foremost create the optimal products, but we also wanted to educate and, and tell people about how light works and empower them to make, you know, free changes to their lives in terms of how they manage light, but also, you know, advise that not all blue light glasses are created equal. Wow. What's some of the information you think that's out there now that is incorrect that you're like, wow, that yeah. needs to be adjusted? So um, a lot of companies will call their clear blue light glasses blue blockers, and they're not blue blockers. They're blue light filtering computer glasses because they don't block blue light. They at best filter blue light, which is great for during the day because you don't want to block blue light during the day because blue light increases dopamine, serotonin, and cortisol, which is very important during the day to keep us alert and active. Right. So that is, that is a big misconception. And, and the second one is probably the fact that a lot of these companies then say that they improve sleep for people wearing clear blue light glasses. It's not, it's not the case. You can't improve sleep with blue light, reducing glasses, filtering right. glasses. They, you have to block 100% of blue and green to improve your sleep dramatically. Wow. Um, another big misconception is a lot of these companies then release sunglasses as well, which based on the evidence that we've looked at, blocking sunlight from hitting your eyes is, is really not a good idea. Oh yeah, that's what I've heard. Because mm. it reduces... Uh, so if you wear sunglasses, then your body doesn't produce vitamin D, correct? To That's like correct, yeah. protect your skin from sunburn and from... So I guess basically it's saying when you're not wearing sunglasses and you're out in the sun, your body catches the UVA or UVB and then recognizes that and then produces vitamin D based on that. But if you're wearing sunglasses, then you your body doesn't recognize to produce the vitamin D. That's that's very good. Yeah, that isn't is, that weird? That is correct. Yeah. So what what it does is um, when you expose your eyes and the skin to the sun, you produce something called melanin, which is a pigment in the skin, and it's an absorber of UV light. So you build a lot of melanin in the mornings. Okay. So it's very important that you're outside in the morning, watching the sunrise, building up this Looking melanin. Looking directly in. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you can you can do. Um, sun gazing. Yeah. I know. I'm talking about sun gazing. Yeah. yeah. So, so I do a little bit. Um, but, you know, if you gaze slightly to the left or right of it, that's not a problem as well. And you're then going to be producing melanin. Now, what their melanin does later in the day, UV comes out later in the day. It's actually not present in the morning. Okay. So in the afternoon, the UV will come out and then we can safely absorb that UV light. It will react with cholesterol and then it will form vitamin D, which is, which is fantastic vitamin. Now, the problem we have is that when we don't get that morning sun or we're wearing sunglasses, 
like what you were saying, Krista, you don't produce the, the melanin. So you, you've got no protection against UV. So you have to put context into everything. If someone is lying into, say, 11 a.m. in the morning, wakes up, rolls over, looks at their smartphone, then goes outside for a bit of sunbathing, you're going to have a major issue with UV. You're going to get you know, skin burn. You, you could lead to something like melanoma. It's very, very serious. Or you could end up getting cataracts um, with, with the UV exposure into your eye. So you have to caveat this by saying that, yes, if you know, don't wear sunglasses, but if you're missing out on that morning sun, it's going to be very dangerous to, to be out in the sun in, in the rest of the day because how we've evolved is that we have been out as ancestors in that morning sun, building the melanin, which is the protect, nature's protection against UV later in the day. So that's, yeah, very, very, very important. So if to you're going to be out later in the day, you should make sure that you're out. Yeah, absolutely. In the morning to get that. Okay. And also in the evening as well. So when the sun sets, I guess, you know, with natural light in the sun, its frequencies changes every hour of the day. They're never the same throughout the day. And you can tell that like pretty easily if you look at three points of the day, sunrise, midday, and sunset, all very different colors in the sky. So what the sunset does, it's very high in something called near infrared light and red light. So when the sun sets, those frequencies of light are actually scientifically proven to be restorative. So if you've been outside maybe a bit too long, maybe you've suffered a little bit of um, pinkness to your skin because you've caught the sun. If you're actually missing the sunset, you're then missing out on the restorative frequencies of light. So the UV light, I'm um, sorry, the infrared light repairs and the red light repairs any of the skin damage and inflammation that's happened to the, you know, from overexposure to UV. And you've seen companies out there, I guess, like, um, like Juve, for instance, that do red light therapy devices. And in essence, that is the same as the setting sun, you know, it has the restorative frequencies of light in it. And that's how, that's the principle of how their device works. So it's very important to be outside, you know, all day if you can do it. But I mean, a lot of people work in offices and it can't be done. But what I've said on sort of numerous occasions is as long as you're watching the sunset, you're outside in the morning for a couple of minutes, sun break, you're outside eating your um, lunch midday ish, you're outside in the afternoon for a few minutes out in the sun, and then you're watching the sun set, you're going to have a really you know, great grounding to an optimal circadian rhythm. And then if you're blocking your blue light after dark with, with red lens blue light blocking glasses, you pretty much got you know, 90% of the problem sorted. And it's, it's not massive changes. It's just making sure that you're blocking the blue light with an optimal product that, that does exactly what it says, but also you've got to be outside as, as well. So many people think that they'll buy a product like a blue light blocking glasses and that's it, circadian rhythm is fixed. And that's not the case. It's, it's probably, you know, 60%, you know, the way to, to fixing your problems, but you've actually got to start get back to getting outside more, managing what lights you have in your home, maybe looking at some hacks to put, you know, salt lamps next to your computer and maybe take some of the blue out of your computer screen. So there's lots of different things you can do in order to, um, you know, fix your light hygiene really. And get better. Wow. What does the salt... I, I have salt lamps. What do they do? How, how would that benefit someone? Yeah. So what you do <laughs> I have, is... I buy them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. purchase, now what? <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people talk about salt lamps from the ion, sort of negative ion perspective, which, which is great. But from a light perspective, the way, the way blue light sort of damages your eyes during the day is that you've got two sources of light. So you've got the sun that we've spoken about. Now the sunlight... And, sorry, the blue light, just to go back, the blue yeah. light damages your eyes because there's more blue light than the rest of the spectrum when we need a balance of the spectrum. Spot on. Okay. Yeah, absolutely spot on. So in the sun, it's all balanced. In artificial light, it's only really blue and there's no other um, balanced spectrums in there. So what happens is because there's no red light in your digital devices like your computer, your smartphone, all you're getting is this cell damaging blue light hitting your eyes. So that's what we don't want to block it because obviously you need it during the day. Um, we just want to reduce it. But we also want to add in some restorative colors of light. Um, and by putting a salt lamp next to your computer, you've got that sort of pink, orangey, red right, light yeah. that is actually going to restore some of the damage that's being caused by the blue in your computer. Wow. Okay. Perfect. Check. Check, check, check. Check. <laughs> um, I did want, you know, people in um, artificial light for most of the day, are there some extra things that they could be doing to kind of balance that out other than you know, going outside during the day? And what effect is that artificial light having 
And what kind of light is it? Like, is it blue light, that artificial light, or what is that? Yeah, so a lot of people think blue light is physically seeing the color blue, and it isn't. So a lot of LED lights, I guess there's a couple here in, in this house here. Damn it. Yeah, so they've got to give that sort of white, sort of yellowy type glow. Okay. But when you test them with a, a spectrometer, and people can see some of the tests I've done on, on artificial lights on YouTube and on our website, the spike and the majority of the um, frequency of, of light that's in there is blue. Um, it doesn't have to be blue to look at. It's, it's, so sources of blue light are uh, your smartphone, your laptop, your office lighting, your TV, your fridge lights, car headlights, those types of things. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not displayed as, as yeah, basically being, um, being a blue color. So when people are working in an office, they might say, oh, well, I've got, you know, maybe uh, an app on my computer like Flux or Iris, which are fantastic. So these are free apps that you can install on your laptop that take out a lot of the blue light and add some red back into it. Well worth doing. You also should have your iPhone or your um, Android or whatever phone you use on night shift mode all the time, um, which is good. After dark, and I'll talk you through how to do it. I had my um, phone on night shift and I've been filtering photos and I had been like putting them on and I'm like... Like I looked at them on someone else's phone. I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> like, yeah. the photo filter looked so different because I'm always on night shift. I was like, yeah. damn, dude. You're like, my hair is orange. I, know, I was like, I'm on fire. <laughs> night shift mode is great for during the day, yeah. ironically, but Flux not after great dark. Too. Flux is fantastic. I have Flux, yeah. I would always recommend Iris over Flux. Oh, really? Okay. Because, Fuck Flux. Because, We're over it. Because, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay. So LED lights actually do something else that can damage your nervous system, and that's flicker. Okay, so they send oh, yeah. out rapid pulses of light Dude, that what? will um, damage your nervous system and cause all sorts of um, immune issues. Actually, wow. um, an iris reduces Whoa, was- blue light, but right. also reduces flicker and actually completely eradicates flicker. So when you're at like a club, like a rave, what's happening? When those flickering lights are going yeah, on, not good things, killing you. Good. Yeah, it's really disrupting your, um, yeah, your your nervous system. And it, it can like people with um, if they are prone to seizures, seizures yeah, why, epilepsy. Like, why would yeah. that trigger that? Sorry, that's a very random question. Yeah, but yeah. Right. connection between the nervous system or like yeah, the, the the flashing and pulsing of like they call it pulsed EMF. Um, and when pulsed EMF passes through the eyes of someone that's susceptible in the brain of, of developing something like seizures, it triggers that seizure to happen. But what, why, they, why these lights flicker is because they are created to be energy efficient. So they're not created to be health efficient. So by flickering, they're not sending out constant energy. So they're actually preserving energy by flickering. So if you film these lights in slow motion, you'll see on your phone, you'll see them just like, flickering really bad. We, we, we were at an, another podcast yesterday and the lights in there were so bad. I felt just nauseous after oh. about an hour of, of doing it. It was so bad. And I was oh. just like, you've got to take these out. It's really? Dreadful. Yeah. What, what was with my flickering lights? What are your thoughts? Because I've... So little background, yeah, guys. So I've been having just like situations where either lights will be flickering when I'm in the room or start to flicker or flicker before I come into the room or I will have the music won't work or like electric things won't work when I'm around or when I'm near. How long has that been going on for? For like, actually not not super long. Maybe, maybe five months. Hmm. Yeah, that's quite a long time. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I, I probably couldn't answer it from the spirit <laughs> side, but, um, and, and I was hoping you would say it was just like, you know, the last sort of few weeks and then we could yeah, easily pin it, on, pin it on retrograde and communications and, and things like that. But um, yeah, when I saw your post this morning, I immediately thought it was the, the lights flickering that you were asking yeah. about. So it was more along the lines of talking, I guess, about why they're flickering. Yeah, um, why? Yeah, so it's, it, because their energy, it's the energy efficiency. But yeah. when you're looking at those yeah. lights, is it, can you physically see them? No. 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 Yeah. So that's Just what, through the phone. Yeah. So through the phone. So Whoa. when you look at those lights, I mean, um, up there, you can actually. I'm going to see if, yeah, see if I can do it now. Maybe, maybe Katie will record. And the flickering them. Is, is disruptive to your nervous system. It so, is. So our body yeah. is picking up that it's flickering, but we're not perceiving it, it to be happening. Yeah, exactly. And it's disrupting our nervous system. Yeah. So, so we, how how would we be able to tell lights that are flickering and lights that are not? Um, by filming slow motion on your phone. Got it. So there's a slow mo. So record on there. 
Um, so oh, there you go. Whoa, oh, hell no. Hey, maybe it's just my high vibe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> triggering it. <laughs> so yeah, that, like we just, um, yeah, I've just obviously just shown there uh, the lights in here massively flickering. Um, there's no way to reduce that. You you have to remove those lights. Oh my God, and I want to cry. What should you replace them with? With incandescent or halogen. Incandescent or halogen yeah. lights. Do you recommend any brands people um, buy? I typically buy mine from a company called Liquid LEDs. Liquid um, LEDs. Which is ironic because I buy incandescent and halogen from them. Yeah. All LED lights will flicker because they run on an AC electric current. They're plugged into the mains. Right. So anything that's plugged into the mains will flicker. Anything that runs on a DC electric current ro- won't. So that's something that runs on a battery. And we've, um, we're actually in the process of developing a light bulb, an LED light bulb say. at the moment, yeah, that doesn't flicker. But we've only managed to get it down to about 98, 99% flicker free. And we want to get it 100%. So we're working with a guy actually in LA called Brian Hoyer, um, who's got some really neat flicker related equipment. So we're sending all the bulbs to him to test for us. Because, you know, the smartphone test is, is a good one to, to go by. But when we tested our bulb with a smartphone in slow-mo, it didn't flicker. But we sent it to Brian to test. And he's got this lab-grade flicker testing equipment. And it was flickering. So, you know, we're making sure that we put all these rigorous tests into our products. But, yeah, LED lights are not just an issue because they have blue. But the flicker is so, so bad. And sometimes even worse. Whoa. Wow. January 2020, we have the new Your Podcast Pro coming at you. Thanks to our friends at Teachable, we have been able to create a course experience, courses, experiences that you are going to love. So easy to use, user-friendly for sure. And we are so excited that we've been able to customize this experience for all of you podcasters and future podcasters out there. Teachable was the brainchild of their founder, Encore. In 2013, he had recently moved to New York, but wasn't sure what the next career move would be. And so he figured out he would launch a marketing course uh, on another site, but was really frustrated with how difficult it was to build the course. If any of you out there can relate, who want to put content out there and teach something that you are passionate about and an expert in, uh, I'm sure you can relate. So he built Teachable to all other entrepreneurs, an easy, lucrative way to teach online courses and earn a living through their expertise. As I said, it's really user-friendly. It's easy to build your course and start selling ASAP. It's customizable. Chloe on our team has been having a blast customizing our Your Podcast Pro courses. And we just have been able to incorporate elements of the brand that just make it not only beautiful, but just a really great experience. So your design, your branding, your vision can just be a part of the course experience. So it feels really authentic and reaches your audience. And they're there to help. The Teachable membership gives you access to online resources that will help you go from idea to launch, from webinars to free downloads. I've taken the webinars because I'm super interested in learning how to navigate and uh, work with this platform as well as Chloe. Um, And they also have free downloadables. They really, really want you to succeed and just make you feel less alone on this journey, which as you know, we love here at Almost 30. So, and they also are offering one free month of their pro monthly plan when you go to teachable.com slash almost 30. And this plan gives you access to their most comprehensive set of tools so you can create the course you've always dreamed of. You will also get access to Teachable U. So that will really kind of walk you through the process and make it super easy. So that's Teachable, T-E-A-C-H. ABLE.com slash almost 30 to receive one free month of their pro monthly plan. When it comes to CBD, we don't stop at just ingestibles or a face cream. We found Foria and we're just blown away. They have been leading the industry as the most trusted voice at the intersection of cannabis and female sexual health and wellness. And they offer a wide range of unique plant-based CBD products for intimacy, pain relief, and optimal well-being. And they're so, so deeply committed to organic practices and ingredients, which is really important to us and to maintaining the highest standards of purity and transparency. So I need lubrication when I am intimate with someone and myself. And so when I found their awake formula, holy 
moly. This is a natural arousal oil with CBD and botanicals. This is the world's first intimate massage oil made with broad spectrum CBD and synergistic botanical and aromatic oils. This is a multi-aphrodisiac blend. And it's formulated for women to enhance tactile sensation and pleasure while decreasing tension, discomfort, and dryness. So it has been a game changer in the bedroom, y'all. So I highly recommend. This is such a great gift for the holidays. Do not sleep on it. Swear to you. For you, your lover, or both of you at once, or you know, their line of intimacy formulas are beautifully bundled in an eco-conscious package. So you can be sure of that. If you have any questions, join our secret Facebook group down to talk about it with you. But I just love this brand. They have a full suite of products dedicated to female pleasure and they have a lube and suppositories for deeper penetrative pleasure. Uh, And it also helps with pain relief if you experience pain um, with penetration. So you can go to foriawellness.com, use our code almost 30 for 20% off the entire site. So that's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com. Use our code almost 30 at checkout for 20% off the entire site. So that's foriawellness.com. Use our code almost 30, 20% off the entire site. Have you read any research about like children, babies, like, you know, what light they're exposed to, shouldn't be exposed to, or, you know, I'm thinking about sunlight and their sweet little skin, you know, what is good, what is not. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so much you can talk about on on those two things. And we did a, a big recording with, with Lacey actually last week that's going live next week that talks about reproductive health and um, how, I guess, new babies work in, in a circadian system as well. Babies aren't born with a circadian rhythm. So that's a, the first point. So when, however, but however, when the mum is carrying the baby, her circadian rhythm will govern behavioral and, and psychological changes and developments in that child. So a lot of studies are showing that if a mum has inadequate light exposure, both natural and too much artificial, that they will disrupt their circadian rhythm and the child will be more prone to having behavioral problems at a young age. That was a really, I'm going to deviate slightly away from light because a really interesting study came out a couple of weeks ago and everyone needs to know about this. And it was called chrononutrition. So obviously, I've, I've explained that baby isn't born with a circadian rhythm. So this investigation looked into, how, well, how does that develop outside of the typical, okay, well, baby needs to be exposed to you know sunlight in the morning and, and the evening, but also preserved from blue light. So the hormones in the baby can, can regulate correctly. Cortisol can be high during the day, uh, low during night. Melatonin can be low during the day and high at night. So what they did was they took some breast milk from mothers that was pumped during daylight hours and breast milk that was pumped during nighttime hours after sunset. What they found was in the breast milk that was pumped during the day, it had extremely high levels of cortisol in it, which is needed during the day to keep people alert. When they tested the breast milk that was pumped after dark, there was zero cortisol in it, but it was made up of tryptophan and melatonin. Both melatonin and tryptophan are sleep hormones and neurotransmitters. So what they were alluding to, because a lot of babies obviously wake up in the night, mum may have pre-pumped some breast milk, put it in the fridge and not labeled it. And then they're giving the baby a cortisol-rich hit in the middle of the night. And what does cortisol do? Drops melatonin and makes you feel awake. It causes an awakening response. So you really got to be labeling your, your breast milk because the hormonal composition of breast milk differs from the time of day it was pumped. Whoa, Whoa. I need to write this down, save this piece. Yeah. Honestly, tattoo it. <laughs> so, and then that would also speak to people that don't breastfeed, correct? Exactly, because yeah. Because then it wouldn't have those hormones. Correct, yeah. yeah. So the way that the baby formula companies have looked at things, it's just the nutritional right. composition of the milk and not the hormonal composition. Right. But then you've got the whole, um, and you know, breastfeeding isn't for everyone. Some people I know, can't, my heart but, goes out to anyone yeah in this space, I just wanted to ask. Absolutely. Yeah, no, same. And, um, you know, it's just, I think it's important if you can to, to do it. If, if you can't, then I think that uh, my personal take on things, and this is just, um, you know, my personal opinion, I think that formula would be a better option than giving the baby a cortisol-rich bottle in the middle of the night 
or a melatonin rich bottle during I the day. I love the labeling. I think that's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. Just what time of day you, you pump it. That's another it. thing. Add it to the list, moms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, I have nothing to worry about. They're like, go pick out. Yeah. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I slept one hour and I have to label my pump. So. Uh, no, but funny. I love that. I think that is amazing. I'm, yeah. I love the new, um, I love any new research like that. Um, yeah. I want to talk about EMF. Sure. What are EMFs? Okay. I talk about them all the time and I technically don't know what they are. So they are electromagnetic frequencies, okay? And blue light, artificial light, is actually a, a non-native EMF, okay? So a native EMF is natural electromagnetic frequency. So Like the, a person. Uh, yeah, so the, the Earth has like, you know, like Schumann resonance and things like that, where there's a specific megahertz of oscillation that, that spins the Earth and that is rotating inside the core. That actually matches with human um, EMF and how we, I guess, our cells oscillate. Because all our cells oscillate on a specific frequency. Now, when we expose ourselves to a non-native EMF, so something like Wi-Fi, 4, 5G, blue light, those frequencies actually oscillate at different speeds to what our cells oscillate at and what the earth oscillates at. So what happens is that either slows down or speeds up cells. Now, in the most cases, these oscillations like 5G, 4G, Wi-Fi, really terrible things because the oscillation that they spin at is a lot more than what our internal um, cells spin at. So what happens is you increase aging because the cells are basically spinning faster than what they should do. So people are aging quicker. And like, this is why you see studies come out that blue exposure to blue light on the skin accelerates aging in, 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 in people. So, you know, blue light's not just a circadian disruptor. It's also an aging EMF as well. So this is why you hear a lot of people talking about 5G being a big problem because we've gone from 3G to 4G, which I think was about... What's the G stand for? Um, I think it's just like gigahertz, like okay. the amount of yeah. spin. But what... But what happened between 3 and 4G was there was about a 10 times increase in the oscillation speed. Now they've released or just about to release 5G. I think it's even switched on in, in LA, California right now and, and maybe even Sydney or, or they're testing it at least. Um, it's about 1,000 to 2,000 times faster on the next jump. So we're not even going up incrementally. We're going literally from you know, maybe 10 to 10,000 times within literally the space of one switch. And it can then disrupt your endocrine system. Like we were talking a little bit at the beginning of the podcast about how blue light can increase, you know, insulin in, in, in the bloodstream and, and blood glucose levels. And what you'll find is because we're disrupting the spin and the sort of internal EMF that we have with non-native EMF is that we're really just impairing our body's ability to be able to secrete and suppress specific hormones when they need to. So it's not just a blue light problem when it comes to, you know, internal um, homeostasis. It's actually an EMF problem as well. Wow. Why don't we have a say? I know. Uh, I that's know. the damn. Oh, they're like installing this and we're just What like, is that called when it's like a something convenience, deadly convenience or something? Yeah. I forget what the actual phrase or terminology is. Maybe it's deadly convenience, yeah. but when it's something that's convenient, we like it, we think we're like, oh, faster... Wi-Fi, faster things, but all, but it comes at a price. Yeah. You know, exactly. that is, that we're not completely aware of. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just switching gears a little bit. You briefly mentioned in the, in the beginning about growing food. I, I forget. <laughs> you mentioned it. I was like, ooh, pin on it. Um, Just in terms of like the light under which food is grown under, obviously most of it is sunlight, but I do think that some of our... Um, produce is being grown under some sort of artificial light. How does that affect plants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great and question. Even animals actually as well, because I'm sure there are oh, some chickens. Yeah, yeah, I think they put chickens in, you know. I don't think they give chickens natural light yeah, a lot of the times. Exactly. And, and you can tell the difference, them. can't you, from a, a chicken that's free range, that's been outside eating what it needs to eat and being under natural light to one yeah. that you would buy that was barn raised. The barn raised one under artificial light has no room to move around. It's not getting the correct frequencies of light and it's typically grows up deformed and it, it develops, you know, sort of growths and things like that. And, you know, when you actually look at a, a barn raised hen in the shop, if you were to buy one versus a free range hen, you know, the barn one will be very tiny. Um, it will be quite tough and chewy um, because it just hasn't, you know, been exposed to the correct frequencies of light to be able to mature and develop how it should be. And the plants work in the same way as well. Everything is governed by light. So the food we eat is essentially biophotons, which is light. We're eating light. So we want to ensure that 
when a plant is grown, for instance, the processes that the plant needs to thrive and create the nutrients that are basically found within it, you need the exact frequencies of invisible and visible light, which comes from the sun. That's how those plants have evolved. So what you find is when you actually grow plants under artificial light conditions, the nutrient levels of those plants are very different, if not less, even if they're the same, than ones that are grown outside and naturally. And this is why there's been a big organic movement now of having you know, no pesticides on, but growing your plants outside as well. So people might look at say, oh, brilliant, right, I can get this organic kale, but it was grown inside. Like, you know, maybe we need to start having labels on food of, you know, was this grown under artificial light or was this grown outside under, under natural light? Because what artificial light can't ever mimic is the sun. There's, it changes frequently throughout the day. The intensity is almost impossible to match, but also the invisible frequencies of light are typically extremely important for plants, humans, and animals. So the UV, A, UVB, UVC, and the far infrared and infrared frequencies are typically the most important. And typically you're, you, you can buy grow lamps maybe that give out a little bit of infrared and UV, but none of that changes throughout the day. So the plants aren't evolving to develop the nutrients that, that, that they need to, to survive and part of their ancestral pathway. But then when we are eating plants that are grown outside, fantastic, we're getting all the nutrients that ancestrally we should be getting. But if we eat those plants that were grown under artificial light, they're probably going to be devoid of a lot of the nutrients, which is probably one of the reasons as why, as well why people maybe eat a lot of nutrient-dense foods or think they're eating a lot of nutrient-dense foods, but they're actually going and getting their blood tests and then, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm deficient in, you know, folic acid or vitamin C, but I'm eating like, you know, 20 oranges a day or whatever. But because they're not, those um, oranges might have been grown under artificial light conditions, they're probably not as high in vitamin C or whatever else that their counterpart that was grown outside was high in. Fascinating. Wow. Mm. Another thing on the list. I know, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> what's your diet Good like? Though. Like, what is right. your, what's a day in your life like when you're, you know, just being so aware of everything? What's your ideal day? Yeah. So um, we, we pretty much only eat organic food. We had a change recently um, where I, I, like, I quite like to experiment with my dieting because I guess a lot of the um, community that I have were very much originally in the dieting sort of nutrition space. So I, um, I typically had, before I moved on, I'll tell you what diet I went on and what wrecked my gut as well mm. um, in, a, in a bit. But I was typically, typically a balanced diet. So, you know, maybe... 70, 80% vegetables, organic, um, and then a lot of fish, sort of small oily fish. Um, because, like sardines? Yeah, sardines, anchovies. Love sardines. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> so good. I freaking hate sardines. <laughs> oh, do you? She's so oh, nasty. No way. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> but I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have respect, though. If you can eat that, that's... Sardines are on yeah. a superfood list for my latest biome test. Yeah. So. Oh, Tim Ferriss love loves it. a good sardine. That, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He knows. And he knows. Yeah. He eats like uh, 40 grams of sardine protein from sardines like every morning. Oh, wow. That's a lot oil. of sardines. Yeah. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's true. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> don't tell him, guys. I did, I did hear where yeah, <laughs> Unbelievable. I did hear he mentioned it once on his podcast and then Whole Foods completely sold out across oh, the country. No way. Go. Yeah. This, Let's get to that level. He needs to make his own brand of sardines. He does. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Anyways, Tim. Continue. Um, yeah, so it was yeah, sort of 70-80% plants and then the rest was sort of oily fish and organic meat. So you're going to hate me now for the diet I did for three months just to test it. Carnivore. So I did carnivore. Jesus. Okay. Let's, let's, talk, let's dig in. So I went carnivore for, for about three months. I lost a lot of, lot of weight. Mm. I felt like I leaned up quite well. But I always felt, felt bloated, which was really weird because I thought like going the vegan way and eating sort of a lot more plant matter, you'd be more bloated. So anyway, I, I went to have my gut tested here in Australia a couple of months ago after the end of it. And I got it tested with someone that was in the sort of um, naturopath space, but also in the biohacking space. Someone that understood light and someone that understood dieting, understood the whole picture. So I, I sent off the, um, the tests and it came back that my gut was just destroyed, basically. Really? Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that this is, Carnival's the wrong diet. People get great results on it. And if I they're am. doing their blood test, brilliant, go for it. But I had levels of obviously meat digesting bacteria that weren't just sort of there mid midway to sort of help digest the, the meat. It was off the charts to the point where 
if it continued, I could have an overgrowth of this bacteria and, and lead to really serious issues. I literally had no fiber present. So I had no gut uh-huh. bacteria that would develop um, and produce, produce fiber yeah. um, or just help digest the fiber. And basically I needed to, to be able to, yeah, she was just like, you got to be re-adding back in, back in vegetables. But also, interestingly, so you what happened... So what is carnivore diet? 100% meat. Like... <laughs> just literally steak Andy. for breakfast, steak for lunch, steak for dinner. Did, like, did you feel like, cognitively good? Or did here's you feel thing, sad in your here, heart? Here's the thing. Like, <laughs> you said like people are, if people are getting the results they want, I feel like people need to re, thank you. Yeah. Uh, re, um, think about like the results totally. aspect of it. It's yes. like, oh, you just want to look better? Exactly. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about like your gut is actually about- Eating its own flesh. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> like, it's so it's bad. It's sort of like, yeah. we want meat. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I like, yeah, completely stopped it. And When um, was this recently? Yeah, so I finished it maybe three months ago. Thank God Whoa. you weren't yeah. here when you were on it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we both smelled it. I know. Honestly. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah. Wow. How do you like... I How did you balance it? Is yeah. Just- yeah, it's just... I mean, and another thing that, that it did as well was... Because I had obviously tests before as well. Um, I became during that period... Um, I had a... I, I developed an intolerance to be able to digest and absorb any fatty acids that I took in as well. And that is bizarre huh. because obviously I was eating a lot of like fat, but I couldn't digest it. Wow. And I couldn't was your process liver it. just like, did, did you do any liver tests? Yeah. My liver function was okay. Okay. Um, okay. However, a liver cleanse was, was suggested um, down the line as well. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was, and, and it's, it's right what you say, Lindsay, you know, people might get, you know, aesthetically amazing results from doing a particular diet. But what is it doing to you internally? My cholesterol levels went through the roof as well. Um, I can imagine. Really bad. Like LDL went through the roof. Um, my HDL went up as well, which is okay. But the LDL was just way too high. Yeah. And I think about like, you know, I, I, we've, we've known some people who have done either bodybuilding or bikini competition, you know, whatever that looks like. And it just seems like they go on a diet at the expense of some long-term health. Um, and I, you mentioned earlier that you're um, introducing this this conversation around light and and blocking the specific light that could affect hormones and health in general to the bodybuilding community. So I'm, which makes me happy because I feel like they like kind of destroy their bodies in yeah. a lot of ways. Yes, they do. What well, they're they still eat. like chugging whey protein. Yeah, yeah. Like, what they eat and what they do and how hard they train without recovery. But that is literally a generalization. I'm not talking about every bodybuilder out there. Yeah. Yeah. All the bodybuilders. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Wait, I just, sorry, I want to finish your day. So oh, we yes. got oh, to sorry. Yeah, where your food. Get to? Yeah, the food. Yes, yeah, so... so wait, um, no, actually, we did it. Did we... Did, have you woken up yet? In your ideal no, day? I, don't, I don't think I He's even like, woke I was up. Dreaming yeah. about the carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah, honestly. yeah. I was thinking to my steak and how <laughs> yeah. it was going to wreck my body. But um, um, no, where do we get to? So should we just talk about sort of like my yeah. day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So your ideal day from like a biohacking light, like food yeah, timing, circadian rhythm perspective. Fantastic. Yeah. So I wake up with the sunrise. Um, I don't have to set an alarm, and I'll tell you, tell you why later. And the first thing I do is I get out of bed and I go outside. Katie comes with me. And we're Cute. out there, sat out the front of our house, watching the sunrise, mm-hmm. maybe for about 30 or 40 minutes. You're like, biohacking's made him romantic. I know. <laughs> sometimes we talk when we're out there. Sometimes we don't. No, I'm um, No, it's really nice. And um, yeah, so we're, we're, we haven't looked at any of our devices yet. We haven't switched on any lights. We've gone straight outside and watched the sunrise. A lot of your listeners are probably in the Northern Hemisphere. So they're going into winter now. That's no excuse not to go and watch that sunrise. Get outside and watch that sunrise because you get the added benefits then of, of cold thermogenesis, which helps in, improve your immune system. So do that. So my ideal day is I am outside watching that sunrise, maybe about 20 or 30 minutes. But if you can only afford two or three minutes, that's better than no minutes. The worst thing I could do or anyone could do is roll over and switch on a light in the morning because the frequency of light present in your phone and LED lights in your house is going to send a message to your brain that it's midday. And that's not good because you've missed out on all the hormonal um, secretions that's needed in the presence of the rising sun, your cortisol, serotonin, and your dopamine. So the reason I'm watching the sunrise in the morning is I want to send a message to my body clock through my eyes from the sun that's present at that time of the day to start my body clock ticking. So it's almost like that first light that you see starts a watch in your body to, to tell the time. So if you're doing it at the beginning of the day, watching the sunrise, 
that clock is optimal. It's starting at the time it should. If you look at your phone or switch on your lights, your clock starts at midday. So you've missed out on all that sort of hormonal and endocrine um, good stuff that happens during natural sunlight during the morning. So that's really not, um, not good to do if you're rolling over and looking at your phone. From a light perspective, then we're fortunate enough that we can work outside. So we, we typically will work outside or we will work by a window, have that window open so natural light is passing through. Those that can't in an office will, will just need to be wearing blue light glasses, the clear or the yellow lenses um, during the day when they're inside. When they're outside, take them off because you want the natural light to be coming through your eyes and your skin. I will typically have breaks in the morning um, and before I eat at sort of midday where I'll go outside and sort of walk around, mainly just with my shorts on, just getting a lot of the light coming in and, and on my skin and in my eyes. Fast forward a little bit, bit, bit more during the day. Around about sunrise, um, I will be out for quite a long period. Um, for sunset? For, uh, sunset, sunset, correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Freud, Freudian there. <laughs> um, yeah, so sunsets, because I want those restorative colors of light. Um, and then as soon as that sunset's finished and the reds are starting to dim down and artificial light is starting to be switched on, I will put my red lens blue light glasses on. My house lights are all red. Um, so yes, it does look like a brothel if you pass it from the outside. Whoa. But... Sexy. Yeah, <laughs> but it's for my health. So um, yeah, so all of our lights are red. Now, Katie had a, an, an issue with... <laughs> not with the red light. I'm just picturing yeah. myself putting on makeup. Honestly, and, and, like, there you go. weird. And you've, yeah. that's, that's where I'm going to go with oh, this. Oh, okay, so sorry. So what the, what the women, the problem that women have is that they wear makeup. So they might put their blue light glasses on after sunset, but then before they go to bed, they go and switch on the, an artificial light, take their blue blockers off and then take their makeup off. And you've just undone everything that you've been doing. You've know, you got to wear those blue light glasses from sunset all the way through to when you want to go to bed and not expose your, your eyes to that artificial light. Because what you're doing is... Start the rhythm. Start the rhythm again at mm. midday. So then wow. your cortisol levels will increase and your melatonin levels will drop. So we put red lights in, in the bathroom where you can take the makeup off. So Katie can take her glasses off and the red light won't impact cortisol and melatonin. So what I say to a lot of people is start off by just putting a few lamps in your house where you can unscrew the bulb and put, you know, a red light bulb in, incandescent or halogen so it doesn't flicker, and then slowly move into other, you know, moving out your sort of overhead lights and things. The, the reason I put red light in, aside from helping Katie take her makeup off, is that there is a lot of evidence now that has proven that independent of wearing blue light glasses after dark, if your skin is exposed to blue light, it can still trigger the suppression of melatonin and keep cortisol levels high. Hmm. So the skin has its own circadian rhythm, independent of the master clock system. So you could have your blue light glasses on, but if it hits your skin, Got it. you're still going to have some wow. degree of melatonin suppression. Whoa. What are you, what's your eating schedule? My eating schedule is I... Do we need to correlate the light schedule with yes, eating? Yes, exactly that. Cool. So the way I describe it is Every cell in your body has a clock, okay? And they're called peripheral oscillators. So peripheral clocks, we'll call them for, for ease. And you have the master clock, which is located sort of just behind your third eye. Um, Pineal in, gland? In yeah, that sort of area. Um, I'm a light expert. There you are now, I have yeah. my own blue I'm blocker actually, coming. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually coming surprised how you. much That's you do now. I know, I look dumb, fantastic. but I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have stuff. You do, you do. Yeah. Um, where was I going with this? Food. Food. Yes. So you have the peripheral clocks. So you see, the way I see it is your master clock is a conductor to an orchestra of mini clocks. And if any of those mini clocks are out of tune, the symphony is going to sound awful. Okay. So if any one of those peripheral clocks isn't spinning in the same or ticking in the same time as the master clock, then you're going to have problems. So if your liver clock isn't functioning properly, you have liver problems. If your pancreas clock isn't functioning pro properly, you're going to have pancreas issues, mm. insulin issues, et cetera, and so on. So when you actually, again, dive into the literature, meal timing is very, very important. So you want to be having your largest meal at the start of your day, followed by your second largest meal, maybe around midday. And then you probably don't want to be eating after dark because there's always going to be blue light present, which increases insulin, yeah. but also digestion impairs the amount of deep and REM and restorative sleep that we have because the energy mm. is put into digestion. So what a lot of people do in the intermittent fasting world is they typically, typically skip breakfast and eat their larger meal later in the day. 
which really isn't good for their circadian rhythm. It might be good for, for weight loss or athletics or for autophagy, apoptosis, that kind of thing. But all they need to do is simply switch it over. That's what I do. Perfect. I love that. <laughs> if anyone wants Not this bot. many people do it. So no, it's really good to do. I'm starving in the morning. I don't like, I, I have like my a big meal later in the afternoon, but if I'm full, I cannot go to bed full. I do not like yeah. feeling full mm. in the evening. Mm-hmm. I feel like it doesn't, it keeps me up. Yeah. It will make me, my sleep really poor. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it I like definitely will. I like working out fasted though and then eating. Is that bad? No, that's good. Okay. Yeah. So your skeletal muscle clock needs to be entrained in the morning as well because it has its own clock system. So typically the best time to eat based on the evidence that I've read, because a lot of people say eat as soon as you wake up. It's actually four hours after the cortisol awakening response. So you wait for your cortisol levels to hit the peak, which is when you're watching the sunrise, and then it will slowly decrease throughout the day. Okay. So four hours after that is typically the best time to eat. So like sunrise is 6.30. We watch the sun. Yeah. You would eat at 10.30. Correct. And then you'd probably eat at like three? Yeah, about two, three o'clock. Two, three yeah, o'clock. I'll have my second meal. I only typically eat two meals. Okay. Yeah. Just big, big old meals. Big old meals. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a few sort of nuts in between the, the meal, like macadamias or something like that, wow. um, which, is, which is good. On, now I'm not doing that ridiculous carnival diet. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried to be nuts. plant-based? I haven't actually. That's next. Yeah. I think it might be. Yeah. I mean, Maybe it was really interesting try. when I was catching up last week with Nick and Melissa Ambrosini and we obviously had lunch at theirs and we had a beautiful vegan meal there. And, and for Nick's birthday, the next day we had another vegan picnic and the food was delicious. And I felt great. Mm-hmm. So I, I think what I'm going to do is move sort of back to that maybe 80, 85% plant-based and then maybe sort of do it phased yeah. if I need to. But I, it's definitely something I want to try. Mm. I've done one extreme. Like I need to go the other side yeah. and see what that's all about as well. Love that. Definitely. Yeah. I want to ask about sunscreen. So, so mm, what's yeah. the deal with sunscreen? Is oh. it a hoax? Yes and no. That's what I heard. Mm. So context has to apply. So let's talk about the perfect time not to use sunscreen. So you get up in the morning, you watch the sunrise, you're out in the morning when UV light is low, you're producing more melanin, which helps absorb UV. You go outside later on during the day and you don't burn. Because of cortisol? No, produces, because, or no? no, because we are... Or, sorry, we, cholesterol produces vitamin D? Yeah, but that's probably not related to burning. Mm-hmm. The melanin acts as an absorber of UV, so it helps filter it. The more melanin you have, and you know, the more melanin you have, the darker your skin goes. So you get people that develop tans, they call them. That's just your melanin going higher. Then you don't need to wear sunscreen. We, we haven't worn it for maybe four or five years. We, we, we don't burn. We sort of glow a little bit sometimes. We've been out a bit longer. Um, and this is like sort of 100 degree days in the middle of summer in Perth when it is searing hot. Wow. And we're out for maybe three, four hours in the pool and, and we don't burn. After they've had been outside not wearing sunscreen or sunglasses, watching the sun set is then going to help restore it. Also, allowing your skin to go into repair mode. Now, I mentioned just a minute ago that the skin has its own circadian rhythm and it's governed by light and dark cycles. So when we're outside, it's in its active phase. When we're in the darkness, it goes into recovery and repair mode. So any damage that might have been caused by UV or any inflammation by pollutants or EMF during the day, darkness actually puts the skin into recovery mode. Mm. So now you can see where I'm going with this. If we come in after we've seen sunbathing, after sunset, switch on our artificial lights, our skin can't go into repair mode. So it's constantly in this active mode. Uh. So it can't repair any damage that happens because... Yes, UV light will cause skin damage. It will. It's just what it does. But nature puts something in sunlight that can heal that. And also when the sun goes down, the darkness then triggers our skin circadian rhythm to go into repair mode and repair any of that damage. But because we are switching on lights afterwards and then going to bed and maybe our room isn't 100% blackout as well, our skin is never these days in a recovery mode. So we age quicker. We have higher inflammation in the skin. We might develop melanoma. Now, from, and this is all evidence-based, this has all been, been proven in, in studies, and, and I can link to any studies that you may need to, to post in show notes to, to back any of these claims yeah. up. So with sunscreen, a lot of people focus from, on it from a chemical standpoint, and maybe there are some chemicals in there that are bad. I, I'm not a sort of chemical expert, so I couldn't really go into that. But the way I see sunscreen as not working is that, number one, it allows people to be out in the sun for maybe longer than naturally they need to be out in the sun for. 
a lot of animals like mammals that are active during the day are typically active in the morning and evenings and they seek the shade during times of, of high heat and high UV. So maybe we need to seek the shade more rather than actually be out in the sun baking. But also what people do is they are missing that morning sunrise to produce the melanin. Then they're going out for a three or four hour sun baking session in the middle of the day, slathering on sun cream. You're not being able to process the, the, the UV light correctly. Then you're going into artificially lit environments after sunset where any of the damage that has been caused can't go into repair mode. So it, for me, sunscreen is is not to be used if you've got a correct functioning circadian rhythm. And you can correct your circadian rhythm within a couple of days of just good habits, watching the sunrise, et cetera. But if you're going outside in the middle of the day and you haven't seen that sunrise or you've got a disrupted circadian rhythm, you either want to cover up or probably consider sunscreen because you are going to burn very, very quickly. Now, I've got a perfect case study sat right next to me and my wife, Katie, mm -hmm. because she has a very low melanin level um, because her ancestry is Celtic. So original sort of people that lived in the UK, very pale skin because there's literally zero sun in the UK. And you used to, or Katie used to go out in the sun in the middle of the day. She didn't go out in the morning. And within about five minutes, she'd be pink, she'd be peeling, burning, and she would never go brown. Since she corrected her circadian rhythm by blocking blue light after dark, having red light in her home, but also being out in the morning, as you can see now, she's like lovely sort of mm -hmm. brown color for mm -hmm. Katie. Um, yeah. And she's built up melanin in her skin. So, wow. you know, that's for someone that goes, well, I just burn all the time. So what happened to Katie? She burned all the time and was obviously had a really bad circadian rhythm. But once she corrected her circadian rhythm and got outside in the mornings and blocked the blue light, she was... Yeah, able to tan. She doesn't burn now. And it's incredible. For someone that burned within five minutes, she's out in some three, four hours with no sunscreen, not burning. Tell me this, who misses their childhood cereals, but gave them up because of all the sugar and the shame that people created around them. <laughs> oh man, I gave up Frosted Flakes. It was such a sad day, but I'm so happy. I recently found Catalina Crunch. Kristen and I have been crunching like crazy women over here at Almost 30 HQ. This is the world's first keto-friendly, zero-sugar cereal. They have delicious flavors like cinnamon toast, maple waffle, dark chocolate. I mean, hello. Um, and we're just so happy that we can eat cereal again without feeling like... Honestly, I felt like shit after when I would eat when I would eat Frosted Flakes. So this is zero sugar, 10 grams of protein, 6 grams of fiber, and it's delicious. Like I can't say enough about it. And it's really important, you know, something that you have in the morning for breakfast should have a lot of fiber to keep you satiated as well as protein. And this protein is plant protein. So it will power you through the day. So if you are wanting to revisit your cereal obsession, you can do so without any guilt. And it's really, really healthy for you. Catalina Crunch. You can go to catalinacrunch.com and you Use our code almost 30 for 10% off. That's C A T A L I N A crunch.com and use our code almost 30 at checkout for 10% off. I am never not looking to freshen up my snack game and I've done so with some perfect snacks recently. Perfect snacks line of fresh from the fridge protein bars are made with freshly ground nut butter up to 17 grams of whole food protein and 20 superfoods all combined to create a cookie dough like texture that is just as nutritious as it is delicious. I really love the coconut peanut and butter and they just came out with their, uh, fresh from the fridge peanut butter cups, okay? And they make them with dark chocolate, which is so delicious. They have a dark chocolate coconut. They also have a milk chocolate. They also have just a plain dark chocolate. I mean, I cannot say enough. I also love their dark chocolate chip peanut butter, which is just like cookie dough heaven. These snacks really fill me up, keep me satiated, especially like before a workout or even after a workout to fuel me up. These are verified gluten-free, soy-free, kosher, low GI, and made right here in the USA. So they're perfect for the kids as well. They have little, they have kid snacks, which are smaller portions and just delicious flavors. My little cousin's adore them. I just sent them a bunch. So if you want to up your snack game, highly recommend Perfect Snacks. So right now, 
they are offering 15% off your online order. Just go to perfectbar.com slash almost 30. So shop the refrigerated snacks and get 15% off your order. Perfectbar.com slash almost 30 today. You know, just to kind of hit this point home, you know, how people don't like risk getting skin cancer or do they have to have kind of like a, like if it's in their family, should they be more careful or no? Like if you're, as long as you're going out in the morning and then if you do go out in the afternoon, you don't have to worry as much about like abnormal cell. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously none of this is medical advice, Um, but you know, um, I think it's wise to look at your ancestry as well. If you've got a history of skin cancer in your family, then... I just think people are so scared of skin cancer. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm asking. Yeah. I, I would I would say be sun sensible rather than slather yourself with sun cream. I would seek the shade, maybe wear some sort of loose linen type clothes yeah, that will okay. cover the skin a little bit more. But also look at your light environment because, you know, any damage that's caused to our body whether it be from the sun or any other source, is repairable mm-hmm. if, we, if we're in the right environment to repair and it's ancestrally right. If you're going home, like I was saying earlier, and bathing under artificial light in the evenings, your skin's never going to be able to repair. So, right. you know, if you've got a susceptibility in the family and a history of skin cancer, then I would seek the shade more in the middle of the high UV parts of the day. But I would also seriously look at your lights in your house as well and ensure that you've got all red lights in your house. If you've got any skin-related issue, I would be looking at the the LEDs in your in your house and replacing them with red or amber or um, maybe orange type lights to allow your skin to repair. Do they have do they have lights like that where they go from I guess during the day you have sunlight, but if you're in a place where there's not a home where there's not a lot of natural light, mm. like and during the day, like having red light, people can't do that or they feel weird about it, but then want to turn it on at night. Are there lights that go from one to the other or yeah. do you have to fully switch the bulb? There is. Um, you can get Philips Hue. Um, oh, those. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. A lot which of them is that on a, f- a timer? I think you can, yeah. Cool. The only issue you have is it's powered by Bluetooth, oh. which is a non-native EMF, which we spoke about earlier. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, so yeah, that. I know. It's... it's but hopefully you can sort of set it to what you want and then switch the Bluetooth off maybe. Um, I'm yeah. sure you can do that. But yeah, our light needs change throughout the day. So typically you don't want to be surrounded just by red light during the day. You still need blue light. You right. just don't need it in the quantities that are emitted from um, LED light sources, solely just blue light. You need to be adding some more colors in. So this is one of the reasons I put a salt lamp next to our workstations, um, just to put some more red light into um in, into my environment you know if it's a gray cloudy day outside i've got to have the window shut maybe it's raining my laptop's on um and i'm doing some work i make sure i've got some red around it but i'm not eliminating all the blue light it's quite um uh, interesting when you see people that are doing this for the first time they typically got this red screen on their laptop during the day and they think oh brilliant i'm doing it right but you're not because you need blue light during the day so you don't want completely red laptop screen. You just want to take the blue down a little bit, add some reds and, and ambers and, and yellows back in to make that, I guess, more balanced spectrum and a much healthier spectrum for you. Yeah, we, makes sense. We, um, we work with Juve and we really love, you know, our Juve lights. It's nice before bed. So that's a good practice. If someone is trying to help reset their circadian rhythm is to have that red Juve light on before bed. Right? Yes and no. Okay. It's always yes and no. morning too. There was something about the morning as well. I do it at night, but yeah, yeah, you said morning. Morning and morning and night is good. Got it. Perfect. The only thing with with any sort of artificial light source is you've just got to be mindful of the intensity of the light coming out. So just, I guess, ensure that, um, you know, it's not too bright maybe in the evenings. In the morning, it's fine, but any kind of sort of bright light could stimulate you know, uh, cortisol a little bit more. I'm not saying that product does. I think it's a fantastic product. I I really like Juve. Um, But I think it's really good to have probably around sunset, maybe just after. I wouldn't do it just before bed myself personally. Um, But the thing is, it's, it's like with anything. If it's working for you, improving your circadian rhythm, improving your sleep, making you feel great, then definitely do it. Now, the good thing about red light devices like Juve is that it contains red light at 630 nanometers and near infrared at 850 nanometers. And both those frequencies of light, it's very clear in the academic literature, 
that they're extremely restorative. They help heal. They help people relax. So, you know, they are great devices to use. It's the same as um, sort of talking about my product in terms of blue light glasses during the day. Like, ideally, you would not wear them and you'd be outside during the day, but you need to have these hacks to be able to live in the modern world. And I think Juve provides that from a invisible light um, and red light um, standpoint. So I think they go very, very well um, hand in hand, both Blue Blocks and Juve. Yeah. Code almost 30 for both. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, I wanted to talk about the pineal gland. So is the pineal gland the, is the source for all hormone regulation in the body? Not all, okay. but most, yeah. So mainly um, melatonin is, is the big one that we're right. concerned about in the pineal gland. Okay. Um, you know, you can have other hormones like sort of adrenaline from adrenal glands. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you're right. You know, mm-hmm. you can have... Um, Where's cortisol created and regulated? The pancreas? You know, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually don't know off the top of my head which gland it's created in. But uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've Maybe. ever not been We're able have to ask nice one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Maybe Jamie? it's a bit of that. It's probably the adrenal glands as well. Maybe. Let's have a guess. I'm thinking <laughs> pancreas. Cortisol. Adrenal rattlesnakes. Cortisol's adrenal, produced. Adrenal, yeah, I was right. And the adrenal gland. Ooh. Wow. Few. <laughs> Safe place. I know, place. honestly. <laughs> You're like, adrenal? Adrenal, maybe. Um, yeah, and like insulin is in the pancreas and there's other hormones as well. But the pineal gland is, yeah, it's, it's the regulator of, of melatonin. So it's really interesting fact about melatonin. People think that melatonin is the sleep hormone and only a sleep hormone. Melatonin is the most powerful antioxidant known to humans. Wow. Okay. It's a reactive oxygen species um, hunter and it's a free radical scavenger. So what it does is any inflammation that's happened during the day, melatonin clears out. Now, when you actually think about it, what happens when we go to sleep? We go into growth and repair mode. So we need melatonin to be able to go around, scavenge all these free radicals and clear out inflammation. Is supplementing with it yeah. recommended? Or oh, recommend it? I got asked this in the, the last two shows in the last couple of days, so I'm going to talk to you about yeah. melatonin supplementation. So two issues with melatonin supplementation that I can see. Number one, caveated by the only evidence that's out there is in our little furry cousins in mice, um, that shows that supplementing mice on melatonin um, actually thins the retina in mice. So I'm not saying that happens in humans, but it's a study that typically they start in mice and then they move to, to humans. But the big thing for me is how is melatonin produced? Okay, naturally in the, in the human body. It's produced in the absence of blue and green light after sunset. So what if we take a melatonin pill to supplement and we're standing under this light now? Our body can't naturally produce that hormone in that environment and then we're putting that hormone into our body. That's going to cause no end of issues for us. We, our body is not in a state where it can create that hormone naturally. So we're then supplementing on it and putting that hormone into our body. That's not going to end well. Now, there's a couple of situations where melatonin supplementation is good. There are very, very rare cases where people can't produce melatonin. Um, they've got a defect um, in, the, in the pineal gland and they can't produce it. So they need to supplement on it. Absolutely fine. And also when managing jet lag, um, as long as you're not a frequent flyer, I think that melatonin supplementation when on long haul flights can, can help as well um, in time zone regulation. So yeah, melatonin is um, supplementation for me is a no-no because I believe it's so easy to produce it naturally as long as you have the light, um, right light environment, a bit of a tongue twister that one, um, and you're blocking the frequencies of blue and green light from 400 to 550 nanometers after sunset, you're going to produce all the melatonin you want. Now, another issue as well, probably a third caveat to supplementing on melatonin. How do you know how much melatonin your body can optimally produce? And if you're supplementing, maybe you're not supplementing enough, maybe you're supplementing too much. And too much of a good thing is never a good thing. Um, It can lead to, you know, you can see it in a lot of people with diabetes where they become insulin resistant or leptin resistant and they can't produce that hormone anymore. They produce too much of that hormone and it all goes out of whack. You know, could that happen with with melatonin if we supplement on it and we're producing, you know, it endogenously and exogenously, and then we're overloading that into the body, and then you know we could develop something like insomnia down the line. Um, you know, it's really for me, hormones are, are not something to play with unless you really need to externally from the body. I think that for me, it's always been about 
how can I improve my environment to actually regulate and produce these hormones naturally? Mm. Wow. Yeah, people have a, I mean, I've done it too, a quick fix, just like taking something and not having to like just adjust all the little things in their life and maybe, you know, feeling a little bit like weird about it for a little bit, but that's really interesting because I know a lot of people t- who take melatonin. So. Yeah. Um, you mentioned flying. I'm, I'm interested if you have any flying hacks as we've been flying. What are these called again? What are these ones called? That's Remedy Sleep Mask. The Remedy Sleep Mask I wear on my flight and it... Yeah, they're the best. I and every and night. in bed. Oh my in gosh. In bed is the best. Because they're I just they're had no idea. On my eyes. It, and honestly, it's like people wear sleep masks, but it's not the same. You don't. You get light in when you're wearing a sleep mask. That's the problem, yeah. And any any kind of small amount of light that's hitting your eyes uh, while she's asleep is going to disrupt you. And it's comfortable. Sleep, feels comfortable. good on my, yeah. my head. It's mm-hmm. the best. And another big faux pas with um, uh, regular sleep masks is they apply a lot of pressure on your eyes. And if you apply mm-hmm. pressure to your eyes over a long period of time, there's a lot of eye pressure-related issues that can actually develop. So glaucoma is a big one, which can be developed from having, you know, hanging upside down too much, but we don't do that anymore. Sleeping sort of <laughs> When did we down. do that? <laughs> <laughs> maybe in the med- trees? Yeah, in the that, trees, maybe. Yeah, true, okay. <laughs> Our monkey ancestors, maybe. <laughs> uh, um, where was I going with that one? So, um, yeah, or, or basically wearing these sleep masks that have horrible tight elastic and pushing against your eyes. So yeah, yeah we made sure we had these eye cavities built that you can zip off and move. I won't move yours oh. off because you've obviously got them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, so wow. you can take them off. They'll have like closer together eyes. Oh yeah. my gosh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> really wide apart I'm standard. Eyes. Yeah, look at that. I love them so much. Um, Anything else while flying? There's so much, so much. So I would encourage people to read my blog on the ultimate hacks for jet lag because what I'm about to give is very general advice because it depends what time zones you're flying through and what direction you're traveling in on how to re-entrain your clock. Traveling east is always the worst. So you guys have probably hit jet lag. I guess, would you be traveling? No, you would have traveled. We actually, we made it our, we, we did it. I feel it. amazing. We did it. We were, It'll be when good. we go back. Well, it's down to the, the blue light glasses that you've been wearing. And it the, honestly the sleep is. <laughs> and honestly. I, people are always like, why don't you stay up all night and then you know wait till you sleep? I'm like, why don't I do both? Mm. I'll sleep the whole night and I'll sleep the whole flight. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a problem, but I did sleep the whole time. I know, I know. So the, the best way to start jet lag management is actually about a week before you travel. So you want to you want to phase shift your sleeping patterns to the destination's time zones as much as you can. So that's either going to bed an hour earlier each night or an hour later. So you can slowly push your circadian rhythm forward. Obviously, there's nothing healthy about switching time zones, but we can hack to make it healthy. So that's what we typically do. We'll slowly alter our bedtime as much as we can. So instead of going to bed at nine o'clock one night, we would slowly phase it over a week till it was like two, three in the morning. So when we arrive in the the destination that we're going to, or vice versa, it could be earlier in the night, um, we are more entrained to that that environment. Uh Okay. Now, from a light management perspective, you need, as soon as you get on your flight, set your watch to your time zones destination and then regulate your sleep and wake cycles based on that time zone you're traveling to. And you can do that by managing the light through the Remedy Sleep Mask, through wearing like three hours before you want to go to bed, whether it be the middle of the day, wearing the Blue Blocks Blue Light Sleep, um, sorry, the Sleep Plus glasses. Um, and that will put you to sleep in a, in a couple of hours. Um, and then when you're, when you're on the flight during the day, wearing the clear lenses or the, or the yellow lenses. But outside of those hacks, there's a lot of other things you can do as well. So fasting on the flight, if you can do it, is excellent to do um, because putting food into your into your system, although you know, number one, it's it tastes disgusting, um, and two, plain food. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Gross. You don't want we're, to be. We're sna- we haul on snacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, need so it. that's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe some like healthy snacks. That's a good thing to do. Drinking drinking a lot of water, pretty standard. Avoiding alcohol where you can. But the big thing as as well is. When you're on these planes, you're in a tube of non-native EMF of like, you know, they've got the plane Wi-Fi on there. You've got higher radiation levels because you're higher up. So you're going to develop a lot of inflammation when you're on these flights. So what you do during the flight is I typically take molecular hydrogen. So you can have little dissolvable pills that you can take and that will reduce the inflammation down. I typically go barefoot on a plane and I will ground myself to the aircraft by touching the metal seat in front of me. Um, and that will help increase DC electric current, which is what humans run off and help keep inflammation levels lower during the, during the flight. 
So you're not going to get as much you know, free radical production. What you need to do when you get off the flight, typically, actually, before you get off the flight, typically the best time to arrive in a destination is in the evening. So you can literally go to bed that night. You don't have to try and stay awake. But what you need to do to reduce inflammation is you need to ground and earth yourself once you're off that flight. Get your shoes and socks off and be on the grass for you know, as long as you possibly can, walking around barefoot or the sand or something like that. The reason you do that, again, it's all driven back to DC electric current, which is the current that our mitochondria run off. And the earth also runs on a DC electric current. So by grounding yourself to the earth, you're in essence charging yourself up, allowing yourself to get the energy back that you might have lost during the, the flight and also reduce the inflammation because DC electric current also reduces inflammation in the body. The AC electric current and then the non-native EMF increase inflammation. What does it stand for, AC and DC? I think DC is a direct current um, and AC is acute. So AC is is basically anything that's plugged into the mains and DC is anything that's kind of battery powered or self-powered like humans or the earth or magnetic. Now, another thing to do is, and not everyone can do this, CT, so cold thermogenesis. So I typically have an ice cold shower um, because that has been proven to reduce inflammation levels. A lot of people have ice baths as well. So if you can do it, do that for sure. Another good thing to do is, is a swim. There's a lot of really good, I guess, ne- uh, positive, ion, uh, sorry, negative ions in, in water, especially in the sea and the salt water side of things. Um, and actually, the best DC current and grounding that you can do is actually in salt water. So if you can get near an ocean and swim after your flight, that's going to really sort you out as well. So those are typically the best hacks that I would use when, I was fl- when I'm flying. It's pretty much long haul from Perth to Sydney as well. So it's a good five hours. So we'll be doing sort of similar. And it's a three hour time difference. So we'll be doing similar hacks to that. And as soon as we land, which is our flights five in the evening, we get in at like seven, eight o'clock at night. So it's nighttime for us. We'll ground ourselves. We'll probably go to the ocean because we live near the beach and get in the sea for a little bit, splash about. Then we'll come home, shower up and, and go to bed. So that really does help. Wow. Um, can you talk a little bit more, I guess, about grounding on the metal on the flight? It, yeah. how, how it seems I get it with the earth, but how would metal on the flight help you ground? Yeah. So everyone always asks that because they're like, the plane's flying through the air and it's not grounded. Yeah. But it is. So during, um, so flights always and planes always have to be grounded to the earth. I'm not an aircraft technician, so I don't right. know how they do that. But every aircraft is still grounded to the earth. I don't know how they do it. Um, but they have to do it in the case of a lightning strike because if you're not grounded, if you haven't grounded your aircraft and it's flying, you could get the aircraft struck by lightning because obviously it's not grounded. Right. Um, and then it can obviously electrocute everyone that's in there. So the plane is actually grounded in some way. So by touching the metal, you're actually still grounding yourself during Whoa. the flight. So through an electromagnetic current, it's grounded? It must be. Yeah. Whoa. Has to be barefoot? Can you wear socks? It has to be barefoot. Cool. Cool. Get yeah. ready. Get yeah. ready, world. Down with that. You're ready to see my you can buy, you feet, can buy grounding feet. shoes as well, but um, yeah. What are your thoughts on Vibrams? I don't wear Vibram. I wear Earthrunners, um, which are pretty good, but they're a bit more like sort of Jesus sandals rather than sort of a cool looking thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and I know Melissa and Nick wear those as well, which which are good. But you can ground. You can make grounding shoes yourself. Like all it is 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 copper that is put through the sole of the foot. So you've got a copper plate that is touching your foot that goes into the shoe and then you've got a um, copper plate underneath the sole which touches the earth and it's that that causes the grounding so if you're wearing something like vibram and you've got socks on then you're not grounding you need to be barefoot in those shoes because you need the copper touching your skin and the copper touching the earth whoa cool cool (laughs) so cool i need to go like journal about this i know we're gonna go ground (laughs) It's just like biohacking for beginners. I love this. I mean, honestly. Well, a lot of people will say, well, I don't have time for that. I don't don't want to do that. I don't have time for that. You know, so I think it's good to... I don't know. I think a lot of people just need the science, the permission, you Mm -hmm. know, the the backed research to give them the permission to make the time. I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's, you know, that's just one of the reasons why I love talking to people like yourselves and your communities because I don't want to come on here and, and say, do this, do that. This is what you need to do. It's like, if someone just takes away one thing of what we've discussed today and implements it into their lives, their lives are going to improve. And it's just beautiful that people can take any knowledge that we can share on, on this podcast or even other ones, you know, that, that other guests you've had on and take some learnings from it and apply it to their own situation. There's never a one size fits all. And, you know, this is why I always 
encourage people to reach out to us personally. Describe your light environment to me. Um, myself, Katie. Um, we're, we're, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, I know. I know. I, I did it on Almost Lacey's and Melissa's. And strong. I was, yeah, I was very busy for a long time. But I, I like to personally answer them and oh, not just one or two that. lines. I've written essays to these people and like, this is what you need to do. And this is the three things you need to add to your life to, to improve it from a light perspective. Because, you know, someone that works a night shift is going to have very different night um, light requirements to someone that works during the day. Someone that's just a new mum and is trying to get some um, get some much needed sleep or entrain their baby's rhythm is going to need different advice. So, you know, it's not just a case of, and this is where other blue light companies differ. They just want to sell a product, a one size fits all to everyone. And it's not the case. Like reach out and join our family and community by, you know, engaging with us and letting us sort of give you the advice you need to, you know, manage your light hygiene. And, you know, I think a, a good saying is, you know, you don't, get well in the environment that made you sick. And that might be, you know, cleaning up your diet. But if you're cleaning up your diet and still sitting in a toxic environment full of EMFs and and bad artificial light, then you're not going to get, you know, optimally better. Wow. This was so good. (laughs) Um, My man's listen to this. Yeah, truly. Truly. Thank you so much for being here. How can people find out more your blog? Blue blocks, email. Everything. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the best mm-hmm. thing to do is jump on the website and sign up to the mailing list. So we're not a, a spammy mailing list with with sales. I mean, it's Black Friday at the moment, so probably more than normal. But typically, I write a blog once every couple of weeks and I'll send it out to the mailing list. I write in such a way as I try and come across on these shows, quite sort of informative without getting too sciencey. But I also link all the studies to my blog. So if people want to actually dive in and read more literature, they can. So that's probably the best place. That's blueblocks.com. Um, social media are very active on Instagram and Facebook. So Blue Blocks official on Instagram, just Blue Blocks on Facebook. And we post a lot of pictures of people wearing our glasses, but not just saying, you know, tagging this is such and such wearing our glasses. We're like, they're wearing the glasses because they're, you know, trying to do this, that and the other. This is why they're wearing it because there's so many different ways to wear the glasses and light situations. We want to, you know, touch on everyone's situation. The email is is on the website, but it's just contact at blueblocks.com. Pretty straightforward to reach out um, to us on there. I will personally answer those specific questions about light environment because I just love doing it. And I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to that kind of things. Gives me a bit of a kick. And I think those, yeah, those are the best places. Light and Health is a group I started on Facebook, um, which is a beginner's biohacking group. So we have some of the leading minds in biohacking that are members of that group. And people ask questions in there as well. So they can just, you know, say, I'm thinking about buying some red light bulbs. I'm in Wisconsin. Anyone recommend a store nearby? And there's bound to be someone in there that goes, yeah, I go to this hardware store and get my red lights from there. So we've got about 6,000 members in there um, and they're all very active. So it's the most active biohacking group on Facebook. So it's well worth joining that. Um, I post in there maybe twice a week. I typically post studies in there where there'll be a new study release, say the breast milk study. I'll post it in there, but with very clear bullet points of this is what it's saying. So people that don't want to read all the really technical sciencey bits, which a lot of people don't have time for, they can get the sort of synopsis in four or five lines that I write in the post. So I think that's good. And I think people should definitely follow, you know, that group and definitely reach out and talk to us a little bit more about light. Awesome. Incredible. Yeah, we love ours very much. So thank you. Yes, Highly um, recommend everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks thank you, me. guys. Such a pleasure. No, I'm thank really you humble and honored. Thank you. Oh, bless. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we Bye. love you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much to Andy for joining us on the show. That was really incredible. I know. That was holy hell. Incredible. And <laughs> just so you guys know, so I honestly could not more highly recommend the Remedy Sleep Mask from Blue Blocks. I have it it's with me every time I travel. So we'll take long flights cross country or international and it allows me to sleep. I'm always able to really sleep on planes, but it allows me to get really, really deep restful sleep. And then even at home in LA, there's tons of light pollution. As much as I try to shut my blinds, um, there's light peeking through all the time. So it really helps you to get really deep REM sleep, which is the most restorative of all the sleep cycles and the amount of light 
exposure that you have has been shown to um, be related to diabetes, obesity, cancer, heart disease. So there's just a lot of really great benefits to having this wonderfully soft sleep mask. Mm -hmm. Blueblocks.com, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. And you can use our code almost 30 for discount. Uh, We wanted to share a review from one of you. Five stars is honestly not enough. Um, I started listening to Almost 30 probably two years ago when I was almost 26. I've always been interested in all things health, wellness, and spirituality. Finding Almost 30 felt like finding home. Lindsay and Krista are so kind, relatable, insightful, and hilarious. Every time I listen to an episode, I feel as though I'm sitting down to chat with two old friends. This podcast has brought a wealth of information to my life that has inspired change, introduced new interests, soothed me through breakups, moves, and other huge transitions, made me laugh when I felt like crying, shown me the path when I felt lost, told me that following my heart and intuition is always the best answer, and that if something doesn't feel right, it's not. As I edge closer and closer to 30, I'm so grateful to have found a community where I can always seek advice and know that I'm never alone. And the Facebook group really is the best place on the internet. The community of women is just amazing. Crystal, Lindsay, and team, thank you so much for all that you do. You have changed my life for the better. And I am so beyond grateful. That's from Julia. Thank you, Julia. Your guys, those kind notes mean so much to Lindsay and I and to our community. It really keeps us going. So thank you so much for writing and reviewing. Just taking a second from your day to do that. If this has been valuable to you, means the world the world. All right. Thanks for listening. And we will catch you on the next one. Have a great day. We will see you soon. Bye.